Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be doing this teddy bear theme setup for a baby shower. Please don't kill me. I didn't record the centerpieces I made, but I will be making them again very soon. But let's get started. So I made, I inflated everything at home. Only had two hours to set up and I didn't want to, um, I had a balloon wall, eight by eight balloon wall to make. And I didn't want to focus all my time on the balloon wall because I had a garland I needed to also create on a sweetheart table. So as you see, I had tried to do something different, which is add two sixties on a pole and then attach them, um, the clusters to that. But I end up twisting the balloons around the pole because it was just way too loose. I made every I inflated everything at home and I made clusters, I guess rows of clusters. So I made I guess three sets and in each set there were two rows and it was seven clusters in each row. So this set that I have in my hand right now all together that is 14 clusters because it's seven clusters going down and then seven clusters going down again. And I'm attaching that to the top clusters and then i'm also attaching it to the what's that on the right side of the cluster or left i don't know so i'm attaching it at the top and i'm attaching it on the side so once i attach them to the top part i'm going to start attaching it to the side to close up the gaps and i may try something a little bit different so i use clusters of six balloons all clusters of six balloons um, however, sometimes the six balloons is not enough. I figure I may need to do like clusters of eight balloons next time. I feel like that will help close up other gaps um, in the area. And you also have to just play around with the balloons as well because some areas and because we was in front of a, a window, which we didn't really have any other option because of the size of the venue, um, I did ask for the curtains to be closed and they had no problem. So we ended up closing the curtains, but it would have been way much more light coming through and because we were in front of the video uh a window you were able to see so much more light um coming through from the balloon wall than you would have seen if we wasn't in front of an actual window so if you add a venue um and a client is you know trying to see where to set up try to avoid windows and you know doors anything with the sunlight coming in try to go up against a wall because then you would have more time trying not to cover up all the light that's shining through through these areas but i was able to get the wall up pretty quickly i feel like majority of the time was spent trying to hide the light that was coming through the walls but for the most part assembling it and because i had everything inflated was quite easy and the colors I used was Truffle um, by Simpertex. And that is that chocolate, sh it's like a chrome. So that chocolate chrome. I used Chocolate Inside Blush by Qualitex. I used Blue Inside White. And I also used White Sand Inside White. And I end up making... Um, one of the areas that I didn't want to add another cluster in, it would have been bigger than what I didn't want to make another cluster, a row of seven balloons to add in. So I kind of just moved the pole a little bit tighter, uh, closer so I can close up that gap that was there. And now it's just going to be one cluster hanging off at the end, which is totally fine. And then I'm going to attach that cluster that I am wrapping around the pole. I'm going to attach it to the cluster that's already next to it their rural clusters next to it. And now I'm going to go in, twist some things around, and then start attaching the clusters to each other. And this, again, this was an 8 by 8 wall. I used my pipe and drape stand to assemble the wall. You can also use floor lamps. I've seen other people... I personally don't like the floor lamps. Only if it was a smaller setup, I would probably do with the floor lamps. But because it was larger, I just felt more safer using my pipe and drape. 
Because sometimes the floor lamps, I don't know, it, it's just me. Because I see other people use it, and it looks perfectly fine. When I use it, I always feel like my floor lamps start leaning to the side. I don't know how to get it upright. It's just, it's just a lot of, <laughs> I feel like it'd be a lot of work sometimes using the floor lamps. But I see a lot of people using it. It looks like it works fine. It's just probably me, you guys. <laughs> um, but here I'm just twisting the balloons around. I'm trying to make sure no necks is showing. I'm going to take, I believe I took either a quad or four balloons. Yep, I took a quad. And I'm just going to add it to that top. And I'm tying it to the blue. And I'm also tying it again to the new next to it. And that's just to make sure that the square is there for the wall. And I'm doing the same thing right here. I didn't do a quad for this. I just did a dupe of balloons. Because sometimes you just have to see what you need. It's not always going to be a quad or a cluster. Sometimes you just need, we need two balloons. So that's what I use just to kind of um, make sure everything was even. And I'm just going in. Um, a lot of time, as I mentioned, went into shaping it and making sure I try to cover up as many holes as I can. And because this was a wall, I already knew all of my necks was going to be pretty much gone by the time I assembled the whole wall. So I already had cut up a lot of 260s um, in half and I put it in a Ziploc bag. And that way I was going to use those to attach the five inch balloons. And it really came in handy. It was quick. I'm glad I usually I cut them up when I'm on site. Cause I'm like, oh, let me just cut it in half. But it was nice to already have them cut up. That way, I can just attach it to the 5-inch balloon and add them on. All right, now we're going to start creating the garland that will be on the sweet card table. I wasn't going to do too much because the balloon wall is right there. And then we also had a table on the left side. So I just wanted to do something really simple, something that's, you know, short, but kind of wide at the bottom. Um, the bottom cluster, that first blue one that I attached uh, is a cluster of eight balloons. Then I used a cluster of, I, be, I was switching back and forth between eight and six balloons. Um, like the one I just attached, that white sand is a cluster of eight. And I'm basically just creating the body here. We'll be doing the three steps where you create the body. And then I'm going to go in and start flaring it out. So I'm going to now add some curves to it. And that's me adding that chocolate part. Flaring it out a little bit more. And right here, I'm just using what I have. Um, if I already have balloons inflated, I try to use everything that I already have inflated first before I start to inflate anything more. I try to use everything that I already have inflated. And if I need to, maybe if it's a cluster of eight and I need to take two balloons out because I need a cluster of six, then that's what I do. All right, so I'm adding that balloon in, in the back. And when you add on, like that cluster I add on, you don't see that four. That was a cluster, I believe, or eight balloons. You don't see that four eight balloons. Um, because I kind of pushed it to the back a little bit more because you only want it to peek out a little bit. You don't want it to sit on top or sit right beside it. Um, so I'm going to push it back a little bit and it's going to basically just peek out and not be sitting right next to the other balloons. And I'm adding a quad of, I believe that was a quad of four balloons, that white sand, to put in the middle because it was kind of like a hole on the right side next to the new. And as you see, I'm pushing that blue cluster to the back. So I don't want it to stick out. I just want it to peek out a little bit. And I'm adding another cluster of that um, truffle. And this is a cluster of six balloon, which would be the last cluster at the top, just to get it that pointy look. And I kind of pushed it in between the poles as well. And that's how that looked. 
And now I'm adding, you guys know I love to end my garlands off with a quad of four balloons on the at the bottom because it gives it that pointy look and I feel like it completes the garland. It kind of gives it like a closing in my opinion. So I absolutely love it. I use the H method on the floor. If I'm not mistaken, I use I used gaff tape, but I don't think I did the full H method. I was being lazy and I added like one piece of tape. But this is how everything turned out. This is the final look. I feel like it was a nice size garland because that wall was already there and it was so big. I didn't want to do like another big piece of balloon on the left side. And this is how the wall came out. As you see, the light is not that much there. You see a little bit, a little tiny bit, but not a lot of it. <laughs> and this is how the wall came out. And these are the centerpieces that I absolutely love. Guys, please do not come for me in the comments. I'm going to make a video. I have another uh, baby shower coming up in like two weeks. So I'm going to make a video of the centerpieces that I made. I also have a video of the stand that I made for the centerpieces because I made the stand from scratch as well. So I already have that recorded. It's waiting to just be released. Um, I'm going to release it when I release the centerpiece. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned some tips. Uh, please leave any question in the comments box if you have any. And I hope to see you guys on the next video. Bye.